Hi, in this slide, I want to expand a little bit more about learn and earn expectations. Um, I have in this slide and past lives been kind of focused on the warehouse and certainly we could throw in drivers. These tend to be uh, very critical but tough jobs where we have a lot of turnover. Uh, so I've taken a page out of FedEx and UPS and LL Bean and say, you know what, I'm going to treat these people like kings because they, they ultimately make the perfect service happen day in, day out. And uh, how do I cut my turnover way down and not only attract a, an industrial athlete, a better attitude, aptitude, but if I can teach them how to learn how to learn, they may, some of them may become promotable into other, you know, job paths in the company. Uh, others may be happy to be a black belt first, second, third, fourth degree professional at what they do. But this does not mean that in any job area, for example, if you if you went to a back office and said, well, here's payables and receivables and different kinds of accounting functions, let's create a grid of the people and the functions they do, and let's systematically start to cross train so that for every single job, we have somebody we can pop in there uh, if the other person, the first person is sick or on vacation, who can pop in there and do that job uh, without blinking and without making a mistake? That kind of cross-training allows the company to consistently execute on time as far as all its processes. And so that's worth investing some money to pay more. Now, if you look at 150%, you'll remember from very early slide that 107% of the going wage compensation package was considered a good wage. So, you know, L.L. Bean may say, okay, year-round warehouse people with a gain-sharing bonus can make 150%, but that doesn't mean they're paying 150% to inside sales or um, back office people. The learn and earn certification may peak out at 110, 115, 120. You know, that would be your choice to, to figure out where you might think a, a, a good, sustainable, keep them, keep them excited, engaged, wage level might be in exchange for learn and earn expectations. But certainly back to the warehouse, we're cross-trained at all, all, all points so that everybody in the warehouse is interchangeable. Uh, we want to make sure that the supervisory and inspection overhead costs go way down, if not to zero. They never go to zero, but that's our goal. Or, or, or ambition. Uh, errors per thousand line items pick get all the way down to negligible amounts, uh, kind of into the point where we have an unconditional service guarantee. Uh, we want our fill rates to get up as high as possible. We can do that with uh, same day receiving, 95% uh, cycle count accuracy for A plus items. Um, and other little details that can help to tune fill rates. But beyond that, it becomes a buyer function to use line item profit analytics for the net profitability of items to figure out how to beef up the very best and reverse substitute redundant, not as profitable items to number one, most profitable items, and therefore effective higher fill rates. Um, because we all now understand how processes cut through departments and it's the service metrics that the processes give that the customer wants, we're all in the same boat, we're all in the same process, we're all trying to deliver the same service excellence. So I expect departmental squabbles to turn from boxing into dancing so that they have actually constantly working on fine tuning how the process improves ever better. And for every job and every department, we'd start, we would aspire to have some sort of certification training manual that allows people to cross-train and learn and earn to a, a higher, better, better level. Thank you.